Uh, okay, welcome uh, to the OCI Dev M uh, little demo. Um, this is designed to be really short um, because I'm mostly a user of it. So we'll see how well this goes. Um, I want to, for the folks who are present here, I just want to ask who has tried the Dev M already? <laughs> okay, great. Um, and Grant raised his hand. So everyone here knows about the Dev M. Mike, did you not raise your hand? I raised my hand, yes. You raised your hand. OK, great. Yeah. Um, well, then I guess uh, it'll be super short, because I think you already mostly understand what's going on here. Um, so here is a look at uh, my screen, which is going to share. I still think that there's stuff to cover. Oh, I'm yeah, it, it's, yeah, it just tells me like how much detail and uh, what to do. Um, all right, Grant, you should be seeing this here as well. Uh, okay, great. So uh, here is a look at uh, our little agenda, which I think if I pull this up, it will load and slide node. Yep, um, so this is the OCI dev env, not the OC dev env. Um, <laughs> and uh, here's a little agenda about what we're going to be going through. Uh, talking about where it came from and why do we need a new one because we already have a pretty great one uh, we're going to look at these things to be done uh, during the demo and then we'll do some q a at the end um, so where did this come from it was originally created by david newswanger um, the problem that it came from was the galaxy ng team has their own dev environment and we had our de own dev environment which was vagrant based and theirs was container based and uh, they're both pretty specialized, and we had a hard time running each other's code, and particularly running each other's tests. And so this has been a problem for since our project started working together. And for a long time, our strategy was, well, you all should just use the pulp dev end. Um, but there was just no way that that was going to really work, um, for two reasons at least. One is because uh they have machines on operating systems that we don't typically run our dev env on like mac and arch and so there was like an os challenge and also their dev env is really highly specialized it has all these options and things and we weren't going to add them to ours and we're asking them to start with ours so the first thing they have to do to start is to like add a whole bunch of stuff to ours that was like a, a non-starter so um we changed strategies and david newswanger uh, dropped this jewel on us, uh, which is something that uh, he made. It's a similar technology to what Galaxy NG uses. Um, it's container-based. And then Dennis extended it to use and support Podman. The original creation from Dennis, uh, from David Newswanger only supported Docker. Um, so I want to mention one ironic thing about uh, this being container-based solution. When it's run on Mac, it still spins up a VM because Docker on Mac actually runs in a VM. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like Docker on Windows. Yeah, that's funny. I did not know this until we were doing this work, and I found that very ironic. That is ironic. <laughs> um, so uh, just a quick look here. Uh, so the OCIM uh, is this repository here. We did move it into the Pulp organization. And uh, all the docs are on this homepage here. So we're just going to be kind of going through a little bit of this together. Um, and uh, here's where it comes from. So we're going to be looking back uh, there a little bit. So why do we need a new dev end? Um, well, we had some challenges with the existing one, which took us really, really far and provided a lot of great benefits. And in a lot of ways, still does some things that um, this new one does not. So there's some gaps. but. The new one takes a really long time to boot. I think it takes upwards of like the, I'm sorry, the old one takes upwards of like the existing one, our traditional Vagrant dev env takes like 25 plus minutes, maybe 20 minutes on, on a good day. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it just takes a really long time to boot. Uh, also, it has challenges running on other OSs. I mentioned and alluded to these with our issues with Galaxy NG. Um, it doesn't run very reliably on Mac or different Macs with different kinds of chipsets and also Arch and other places too. I mean, you can get it to work with enough time and effort, but the whole idea here is you shouldn't have to. If you're using Arch, 
you're used to have. Yeah, definitely. That's right. <laughs> so um, also, it's very different from the CI um, because it is Vagrant based, and we really struggled to, I mean, it's just challenging to get the Docker backend for Vagrant working. We tried, I think, at least three times with three different efforts. Um, that was, we were not able to get that going. Um, and it's just complicated, it's hard. Um, so that's not a, that's not a judgment statement. Um, so, but because of that, we never could really run our, it's our previous our Vagrant dev end in the CI. And we still aren't running the new one in there, but we very well can. And this is gonna be big because what we want is our local development environment and our CI environment to be unsurprisingly very similar. So that's um, one of the reasons why we need why we need a new one. Uh, so that's actually the end of our slides. So now let's go on to the demo portion. Um, so just before we get into the demo, you can see what I've already done on my laptop here a little bit. Uh, you uh, clone the uh, this repo the OCIM repo, and you in, you pip install the project, uh, which will give you uh, this OCI-N Python client, and this is how you invoke the new uh, dev environment. You also need to install Podman or Docker Compose. Uh, I think I'm doing my demo with Podman, but I originally started with Docker. They both work great. And then you need to clone these minimum repositories. This isn't quite required. You really need the OCIM, that's this repo here. You need the Open API generator for binding stuff generation. You definitely need pulp core. And you can pick your plugins. Like I'm gonna be demoing just today with pulp underscore file. So you don't actually need pulp ansible or pulp container. Um, but you do need some sort of plugin. And then in this repository, you'll find a .compose.m file. And this is how you tell the dev environment which plugins you want. So uh, you can see in mine, I've done this. So I've copied the example uh, to it. So let me see if this is big enough. Uh, so the compose environment is, uh, file is very simple, in, in my opinion. Um, and we're, uh, you know, I mostly develop on pulp. Uh, we'll talk about what custom profiles are in a little bit, but you could put other values here. I don't have that because I don't use other profiles typically. Um, but there are profiles, for example, like if you wanted to boot the Galaxy NG style dev environment, which has all these additional things set. And um, I won't say customizations, but I guess they are, it's just meaningfully different in how it works. Um, that's a profile. So I don't have any profiles set because I just use pulp dev. And here I'm specifying that I wanted to install pulp core and then I'm expecting that it also installs pulp file. So you would put more plugins here uh, in this kind of colon separated list. And you can see uh, here, like this this would specify in the example, it's like, oh, I want pulp core and I want pulp ansible. Um, we'll talk about profiles in a little bit. Uh, and then you can build those images. So let me, um, let me, let me just stop this whole thing real fast. When you run down with dash dash volumes, it removes the volumes that were created for the environment. This is good for like really like destroying the database. Um, so I'm running build here. Um, thank you, Des. So I'm, I'm running build here, which is uh, working with Docker Compose or Podman Compose to um, compose the, the containers that will boot. And then after they boot, some additional installation happens based on which plugins and things that you want. Um, this is built off of the containers, off of our pulp what are they, what's the name of it specifically? It's the Pulp OCI Images Repository. The Pulp OCI Images Repository. So um, we publish these images to registries. These are like our official published images. And these images are kind of built on top of those. And so it's nice to see all of our tools kind of working together. Um, and this has been updated for the recent port to, Mike, what's the name of our new thing? A 6RC. A 6RC. Yes. Yes, 
in yeah. the 6RC mode, yes. Cool, so this is up to date and has been, is, should be fully working today with all the latest stuff. Okay, so now we've built the uh, environment. And then you can run uh, Compose Up, which is what is gonna give you uh, the, um, the environment. So I put, I put this dash D on the option of it, which runs it in daemon mode, because otherwise it, it runs kind of interactively, but I just want my terminal back. So I put this dash D on the end of it. It stands for detached. Detached. So you can see just how fast this thing boots. Um, So it's not fully booted at this point. In my second, in my other environment, I run this OCI-N compose logs with dash F to follow it. And you can see that it's uh, still kind of booting on the back end, uh, the containers that is. Um, and uh, usually gives me more output than this. Yep. So now it's installing specific plugins because uh, the built containers are kind of the base environment and then it gets customized at boot time for the specific plugins you want. So uh, I it starts, I think, five containers, um, one for the database, one for each of the pulp services. It applies the migrations and uh, we're booted. So that was super fast. I think that's under a minute. Um, which is delightful. Um, you'll see a post telemetry here, I think, in one, in one minute. Oh, look, there it goes. So uh, that's how you boot the DevM. Um, feel free to jump in with any questions. I think most of you have done this process, so uh, I don't, I'll just continue. Um, so if you want to tear down the dev environment, <clears throat> you use this compose down, uh, which will literally just stop the containers. Excuse me. Um, but you can also, as Dennis said, give this dash dash volumes option, which will actually delete the containers. And this includes the database. So I do this often when I want to have it rerun migrations. Like maybe I'm writing a migration and I just I need to start from a fresh database because that's how my that's what my needs are at that minute. Excuse me. So um, with that, uh, one option here is, this is what I'm basically saying, is um, you can reset the database with this down and up pattern, and that's fine. Um, supposedly, you also can do this. This was added. This is going to be OCIM DB reset. Uh, yeah, yes, live demo, so we'll see. Um, I've, never been I've used it a few times. It's gotten better, um, so you can see. Yeah, and then I think it waits for the services to come back up. Um, so this is even faster than a one minute boot. Um, okay, yep, so that's fast. Um, that deleted database and rerun the migration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one thing it doesn't do though, as far as I understand it, David Dewswinger, if you're listening, is um, it doesn't, I don't think, reset Farlib pulp for mm -hmm. previous artifacts, which is something our other dev end did. So okay. we, we should well, do that. That's that's easy. I mean, my grace, this is really the big part of the value. Also, the command is called db reset, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, OK. What I meant was that it's an easy feature to add. It is an easy feature to add. I don't have it on my laptop right now, but I would file an issue. Yes. Um, and that's a good point to say that uh, issues can be filed um, wherever issues can be filed. So up here on the issues area, you'll see that there are some issues. We're going to look at those in a little bit. There are also some pull requests. It actually gets pretty good, um, pretty good love. So uh, just a few more things, and then we'll be done. Um, I'm not going to actually do all these things um, because running tests takes a long time. But if you want to run um, lint, uh, linting like runs in the CI, or you want to run functional tests, it's more or less in both cases, a two-step process. First, you have to install the tooling to run that stuff, and then you have to run it. So the first command for the linting stuff is OCIM, which is the client that you do all the things with. OCIM test, uh, the plugin name, lint, and then uh, dash i for install. And then this is what actually runs the linting. So this I bet, this I bet we can't do this. It's going to be really fast. Um, that will install and run the linting. Oh, 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 yeah, OK. Um, so let's do pulp file stuff. 
So but one of the suggestions I wanted to make was done. that we um, install the clients, generate the clients, and install the clients at boot time. I agree. Like that, just because I find myself doing those commands over and over again. Yeah. And I feel like they should just be done by default. So um, this was very fast. You'll find that the unit tests and the functional tests can also all be run uh, in the same kind of pattern. And this was really, you know, if we look back at the motivations for this work, it was so that our mutual projects could run each other's tests really nicely. And that's exactly what you get here, because now you can easily run the pulp Ansible test as a Galaxy and G developer, or the Galaxy and G test as a pulp developer, or the test for another plugin as any sort of developer. And you have like a Many more people to ask about the deck of mine. Yeah, there's also this portability. Yeah, well, no, what I like is that most of the work on this dev environment was done by not people on the pulp team. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's been great having all this collaboration and having so many more people involved in it. Yes. Um, so, there's some notes here on uh, how to perform debugging. So, debugging is an important part of development. Uh, and you can um, put statements with, you can do EPDB e style debugging here. Um, you can probably also do RPDB, I'm not sure. Uh, but when you then when you run the tests, you'll receive your breakpoints here and you can interact with them. Uh, the same with PyCharm, if you use the PyCharm style things, this is how you can do it. Um, you do need a, a modern version of Podman. I think there's a note down here that you need Podman 4.1 or newer, which is what you get on Fedora 36. Or you can install Podman manually on Fedora 35 or earlier, and that's also pretty easy. Um, but uh, here's how you do debugging. Um, I'm pretty sure that these tools, like PyDevD, PyCharm, are actually installed natively now. So okay. yeah, this, this is a change that happened by them like last week or something. So. Cool. Uh, similar for unit tests, you can run unit tests. So profiles is um, a section that I don't use very much, but I'm going to start using it more. So uh, with profiles, you can run these custom profiles, which are actually kind of documented up here at the top. Uh, here, let's see, do, 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 profiles. Um, in this section, in compose profile, uh, you can get extra services running or customizations um, at, at uh, Build time, I believe, is when this happens. So when you do the compose build step, and up. build and up. So it can occur customizations can occur in both places. So here, for instance, if you're a Galaxy developer, you're likely going to run it with this, uh, which uses the HA profile. The profiles are defined in the repo, and you'll also get the UI profile from them as well. So when your booted environment comes out, you have a full UI, and it's exactly like what they would typically do it. Um, and you can also set additional settings here in your environment. This is an important one for our use by setting pulp underscore setting name uh, in your, this would be in your uh, compose um, your compose file. So that's the thing we looked at at the beginning, compose M. Um, so this is how you could configure to do things. So what we want to do is uh, have some profiles made that will configure the DevM, particularly with its different storages. So we want a profile. I think the next one that we said we would do was S3, maybe? Yeah, the, I envision us having one for S3 and another one for Azure. And it would it will spin up an additional container that's going to provide that storage service. Yes. And, uh, and also, we need one for the uh, the FTP backend or some, whatever um, Matthias added to ensure the streaming feature works yeah. correctly. So I think it was like SFTP or something. SFTP, something like that. Um, so uh, that is not in place today. And you don't get that stuff, I don't think, in our current Vagrant environment either. But you do get it on the CI. And so this represents a gap that we're filling, a new capability for developers, but at the same time, bring, closing the gap between our developer environments and the CI environment. Uh, which is, I think, pretty pretty huge. Yeah, because right now in our CI, we we do start up those additional containers, but it's like a separate thing that we do instead of a team of started using Compose. Yeah, in many ways, yeah, exactly what you said. Um, so 
This is the long and short of it. I did promise also to talk about building docs. And so let me just show that real fast. Um, I'm supposed to help make this easier, but until I do, I go look at the make docs building easier <laughs> and it has commands and then I run them. Uh, so uh, for instance, I'm outside of the dev env here. I'm on my, I'm on my local machine, but if you do shell, you'll actually get shell access right to um, one of the containers. I'm not actually sure which one it is. Uh, then I'm gonna install the um, docs building requirements. This is kind of similar to like running the linters or the unit tests. Like it's a two step thing. Step one, install. Uh, step two, run. Um, step 1.5 is change it to the right directory. And then you can build your docs just like you normally would right here. I was just working on docs on Friday. I used this for that. It was great. Um, what I really want, what we really want is a OCI dash dev, like make docs command basically. And that's what I'm supposed to help make at some point. Okay, so we made docs. And uh, I think if we look here, these are actually the very docs that were built because since it's container based, it's not a separate machine. It, it actually runs on my own file system. And so this file colon slash slash path on my local machine is actually the stuff that just got built. Um, you'll have to take my word for it because I don't really have time to make changes and prove them to you, but um, I was just making these docs on Friday. Uh, and then also um, there's a, so the port that Pulp listens on is 5001. And so, so, so it can be defined in the docs.pros.n file. Yeah, and you can definitely configure that. This is just the default that you get. So this is my Pulp system running locally um, and it's you know everything that you would normally expect from a pulp system so I'll just kind of leave it uh, leave it at that let me go back to my little uh, stuff here actually it was in the agenda starting shutting down we showed that building docs running tests remote debugging and profiles um, so the last Thing that I want to share, aside from second last thing, I guess, is a huge thanks to David Newswanger and everybody who's contributed to this project so far. Um, a great way to contribute is by trying it out and telling us um, how it can be better. And we've already had some really nice outside of the team success, and I'm not talking about Galaxy and G. Um, this has been started to be used at ATIX, and it was used almost right away. And the feedback that I received, I don't have it quoted here, um, but the feedback that I saw from HSTS, from HCTC, I think that other thing's an HTTPS protocol thing, um, is that this was really, really great. Um, it worked right away. I mean, basically, all, all the claim of benefit was realized. It worked right away. It was easy. It booted fast, and it ran on a different OS. Um, so that's really great. Are there any um, questions? Uh, if not, then I will just end this a few minutes early. Um, OK, cool. Uh, we will hear don't another. To, don't forget to stop the recording, Brian. Hey, we're going to stop the recording. Um, thanks, Grant. Uh, we're going to see another presentation from this, I believe, at PopCon. So we'll see what happens in between now and then. And uh, with that, I'll just um, say have a great day. Thanks.